Where in the Bible do we find anything about the Pope? First, let's go to Isaiah 22, where we find the Lord God speaking to a corrupt steward in the house of David. The steward is being deposed, and a new steward named Iliakim is being installed. In that day I will summon my servant Iliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and fasten your sash around him and hand your authority over to him. He will be a father to those who live in Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place on his shoulder the key to the house of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. In this passage, we notice three important concepts. Keys, which symbolize authority. The house of David, which also refers to the kingdom of Judah since the house of David was reigning and opening and shutting, which represent authority. So what does any of this have to do with the Pope? Well, let's go to Matthew 16 now. Here, Jesus has just asked his disciples, Who do you say that I am? And Peter confesses that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus, in turn, bestows something on Peter. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Notice that Jesus uses the images of keys, kingdom, and binding and loosing. Jesus was clearly referring to Isaiah 22:22 when bestowing stewardship on Peter, indicating that he was to be for the church what the steward was for the house of David. So what was a steward? A steward's responsibility, in part, was to watch over the kingdom and make decisions on behalf of the king in his absence. We can see an example of stewardship in Luke 12 when Jesus says, Who then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household, to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. So Peter was made steward over the kingdom on earth in a sense, to rule it after Jesus' ascension. This is why Jesus said that Peter was to be a source of strength for his brethren in Luke 22:32, and why in John 21:15 Jesus singularly asked Peter to feed his sheep before the ascension into heaven. We can see a glimpse of Peter's special authority in Acts 15, when he is the first apostle to speak up in a theological dispute at a council, after which the matter is effectively settled. And it wouldn't make sense for this important office to disappear with the death of Peter, who himself said that when an office is vacated, another should take the office, Acts 1.20. It stands to reason that after Peter died, a successor was chosen to replace him. And after that successor died, yet another successor was chosen, and so on in an unbroken chain of succession until you reach the present time. Every Christian must therefore ask themselves, who currently holds the office that Jesus established in Matthew 16.18-19? Whoever it is, they will be the inheritors of the special authority that Jesus gave to Peter, an authority of stewardship over the whole Christian church on earth. For Catholics, the answer is simple. It's the Pope. In fact, the line of succession can actually be traced back from the current Pope all the way back to Peter himself. There's a lot more that can be said about where we find anything about the Pope in the Bible, but I hope this video has shown that it is rooted in the scriptures. The important thing to remember is that for Catholics, the Pope is not a king. He's the steward given some authority until the return of the King, the Pope is constantly reminding us that we ought to prepare for His return.